Well, good morning and many thanks for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. I'm not far from home this morning. Uh, I'm here in the old kirk in Newcomlock, which dates back hundreds of years to 1659. It was built, so just a ruin round about me uh, this morning. Uh, it's a place of great uh, uh, historical significance. Uh, there was a minister here called the Reverend Young, and one of Rabbi Burns' poems, in fact, uh, kind of references uh, the Reverend John, uh, the Kirk's Alarm, and it was also the site of a lot of controversy round about the times of the Covenanters. Some of the great Covenanters actually preached here. I think it's probably something in the region of 170 years since this church building was used as a church, so perhaps this morning uh, this will be the first time that there's been anything preached, any message from the Bible preached here for 170 years. I'm going to read a, a couple of verses in Matthew's Gospel uh, for a change. Matthew chapter number 11, the words of the Lord Jesus, uh, verse 28 says, Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wonderful words that were spoken by the Lord Jesus. Those words that perhaps to some of us are quite familiar were words that were utterly revolutionary when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, spoke them. He spoke them uh, in a setting, in a society when people were very religious and religion for them meant uh, places to go. It meant things to do. Maybe a bit like the place that surrounds me uh, this morning uh, about churches and that kind of a thing. But here in Matthew 11, uh, 28, the Lord Jesus Christ invites people not to do things or to go to places, but to come to him. And within that verse, we've got the very essence of the message of the Bible, the message of the gospel. It's an invitation to a person. Those words might sound very egotistical or egocentric, come to me. But in fact, they're the very distillation of the essence of this book. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, speaking to uh, the uh, teachers of the Bible elsewhere in the New Testament uh, invites them to search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but these are they that testify of me. And when the two were uh, so discouraged on the road to Emmaus after having witnessed the death and crucifixion of the Lord Jesus the Saviour encouraged them and lifted them up by opening to them the scriptures and showing in those scriptures the things concerning himself. In other words, this book is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's within the pages of this book that dominating uh, the themes of the Old Testament are these wonderful prophecies of the coming of God's Son, the answer to human need, the answer to human misery, the answer to human sin, all tied up in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as he invites uh, you and I, as he invites the men and women of Matthew 11 to come to him, he's not being egotistic or egocentric. Uh, he, he's not being proud or arrogant in any way. He's telling the truth. He's pointing to God's solution to human problems. It's not so much about what we do, and it's not so much about where we go, but it's about coming to a person. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's inviting those who have a sense of burden, a sense that they're carrying about a heavy weight. And if, if you were to go into the next chapter of Matthew's gospel, you would find that the next chapter is all about religious doings, religious observance, people trying to do things to, to please God, uh, keeping the Sabbath, for example, and, and keeping all the rules and regulations of a religious system. They're really desperately trying to uh, ingratiate themselves to the God of heaven. You see, they have a sense, and the sense is true, they have a sense that there is a problem between them and God. They have a sense and the burden of the distance between them and the God of heaven, a sense of what the word of God uh, so often would refer to as sin, sin, that is the breaking of God's laws. Conscience tells us about that, the Bible tells us about that, the Ten Commandments tell us about that so often. And here are these people and they have these great worries uh, about what is going to happen one day when they meet God. And those worries are transformed into work. So let's try and work our way to pleasing God and uh, keeping all of those rules. 
But the Saviour presents something radically and completely different. It's not about works and it's not about places. It's about a person. It's about a step of faith. Come to me, all you that labour and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want you to come. Uh, I want you to rest. And I want you to take, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. We have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ in the same spirit as the Lord Jesus himself. Not with pride or arrogance, but with a sense of meekness and a sense of lowliness. A sense that we can see our need being met in the Lord Jesus and a sense of our own need. A sense that there is that deep need in our soul for preparation to meet God. Do you remember the old prophet in the Old Testament cried, prepare to meet your God? Well, uh, that sense in our soul that we need to prepare. And we get a glimpse of who the Saviour is. We get a glimpse that here is the fulfilment of all of these ancient Old Testament promises and prophecies. We get a glimpse of the wonder of the cross. Is it possible that God himself should die upon the cross? Uh, that is what Zechariah says, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Is it possible that God could do something utterly unimaginable, that instead of demanding my payment for my sins, that he pays the price for my sins in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's so utterly unimaginable that only God could imagine it. And it is with that invitation that the Lord Jesus Christ calls all those, all those, this is an open invitation to do something, to take a step, to come, to come and to rest in him and to take his yoke upon us. That is that once we begin that journey of faith, we continue that journey of faith in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful gospel message it is. What a, what a wonderful good news message. It's a good news message, not so much about old ruined buildings or places that we go to, but it's a good news message about a person, about the person of God's Son who's finished a work and he invites you and I this morning, he invites you and I to come to him, to rest in him with that sense of a deep need of him and to trust in him for time and forever. Thanks very much for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. And do remember the website, graceinchrist.org. Uh, there's lots of messages uh, on that too. Uh, thanks very much.